Until the late 1980s, there was a prevailing belief in the medical community that even newborns couldn't feel pain due to their undeveloped brains. Today, many major medical organizations believe that a fetus is capable of feeling pain from 24 to 25 weeks. At 24 weeks of development, the fetuses respond to noxious stimuli with increased heart rate and blood pressure. At 30 weeks, fetuses have brain activity in areas associated with pain processing. The ability of the fetus to experience pain and awareness is influenced by the development of the nervous system. The cortex, the outer layer of the brain, is a crucial part of the brain involved in the perception of pain. The thalamus, another brain structure, serves as a relay station for sensory information like pain to the cortex. In the early stages of fetal development, the cortex Subcortical areas such as the brainstem and thalamus are not fully mature, and synoptic connections are still forming. Therefore, in the early stages of development, the brain doesn't have the necessary hardware and software to support conscious pain perception. On the other hand, there are some theories that a fetus could feel pain perhaps as early as the first trimester, which is up to 12 weeks of pregnancy. They believe the neural pathways necessary for pain perception starts to be seen in the fetal brain as early as seven to eight weeks of gestation and pain receptors and spinal cord connections are linked to the brain by 12 to 15 weeks. However, evidence indicates that the possibility of pain perception before 28 weeks of gestation is unlikely. It is now recognized that pain perception requires a comprehensive network rather than the presence or absence of a specific region or set of connections. This has been termed the human pain connectum. Ethical considerations play a significant role in discussions about fetal pain perception, especially in the context of medical procedures and abortion. In cases where fetal surgery is necessary, Analgesics are administrated directly to the fetus through the umbilical cord or intramuscular to ensure that it does not experience pain during the procedure. When a medical procedure is performed on a pregnant woman, medications administrated to the mother can cross the placenta and reach the fetus. Providing a degree of sedation to the fetus Still, it may not be sufficient to prevent fetal pain or stress responses during invasive procedures entirely. Direct fetal administration of opioids is still required to blunt the fetal stress response to invasive procedures reliably. In the context of abortion, the question of fetal pain and its management becomes even more sensitive and complex. Advocates for reproductive rights often emphasize a woman's right to make decisions about her own body, including the decision to terminate a pregnancy. Also, there are some reasons a doctor might recommend a therapeutic abortion, like severe fetal abnormalities, pregnancy complications, and maternal health risk. However, some argue that fetal interest and potential pain 
should be taken into account when making decisions about abortion. However, the vast majority of abortions take place early in pregnancy, with around 91% occurring before 13 weeks and 7.7% between 14 and 20 weeks. According to the latest abortion statistics for England and Wales in 2021, only 1% of abortions occur over 19 weeks of gestation. In early gestational abortions, typically up to 12 weeks, no specific pain management is used for the fetus. This is partly due to the uncertainty about pain perception at that stage and the potential risk of additional medication for the pregnant woman. In early gestational abortions, the primary focus is on the safety and well-being of the woman. For abortions performed later in gestation, past 20 to 24 weeks, some practitioners might recommend certain medications used for maternal sedation or anxiety relief. These medications might have some unintended pain relieving effects for the fetus. Beyond the physical sensation, Pain is also inextricably linked to emotions and cognitive processing. Factors like anxiety, fear, depression, and past experiences can significantly influence how someone perceives and experiences pain. When a pregnant woman experiences stress, her body releases stress hormones like cortisol, These hormones can cross the placenta and reach the fetus. While it's unclear if these hormones directly cause stress in the fetus, they can affect its heart rate and movement. Chronic stress exposure may also have long-term consequences for the fetus's neural development and mental health. However, while the fetal brain may not yet experience conscious pain like an adult, these pathways could send stress signals in response to the mother's pain. There's growing evidence that a mother's emotional state can influence the fetus through various mechanisms. Positive emotions promote healthy fetal development, while negative emotions like anxiety and depression can negatively impact the fetus's stress response and neural development. This likely involves a complex interplay of factors beyond just hormones, including maternal fetal bonding and emotional communication through nonverbal cues. A supportive partner can provide comfort, listen to concerns, and help manage mood swings. Studies show that women with supportive partners tend to have lower stress levels during pregnancy, which can benefit both mother and baby. The context of fetal pain perception is complex, and scientific understanding continues to evolve. The development of pain perception in fetuses is a gradual process, and it is unclear at what point they become fully aware of pain. <laughs>